Hi everyone, today I'm excited to tell you about what an ordinary spinach leaf can tell you about the wonders of plant science. My name is Rose, I am a first year PhD student at the Research School of Biology here at the ANU. So today I'll be running you through a quick and easy experiment to take a look at the compounds that change the colour of various plants and how we might explore the different properties that they have. So for this experiment, to start off, you will need some type of soft green leafy plant. Um, in this case, we're using spinach, so normal spinach or baby spinach will work really, really well. Um, but any similar plant or vegetable that you can find will also be perfect. So we'll need a few leaves of this plant of your choice. We also need a cup, like a paper cup that has been provided, or a glass beaker, which I'll be using today to let you guys see everything more clearly. Um, you'll also need a pair of scissors, um, a filter paper, such as this one, uh, a small pipette, like the one we've got here, and also some acetone, which I've got in this container over here. So the first step that you'll need to do is take your filter paper and just cut a small strip, a small rectangular strip like this using the scissors. So here's one that I've cut from this filter paper, and I've also got one here. Um, and so any strip that kind of will fit into the jar that you're using should be perfect. Um, make sure that it's like a little bit longer than the height of your jar so that you can fold it over like this to secure it later on in the experiment. For the next step, what we'll be doing is we will be transferring the pigments or the color compounds from this leaf onto our filter paper. So I've just laid down a tissue on the bench to make sure that we don't get our work surface too dirty. And I've popped the filter paper directly onto it, tried to flatten it out. And what we'll be doing is placing our spinach leaf or our plant leaf directly onto the surface of the paper. And then using our pipette, what we'll do is we'll just press down horizontally and then just press it down really hard, give it a bit of a wiggle, take it off. And what you'll see is, if we do this a few more times, eventually you'll see a green strip of the plant on your filter paper. So I'll just repeat this, move the plant around a bit, make sure you're pressing in the same spot. And you can see that we're beginning to form like a green solid line onto our filter paper. Um, it's okay if this line is like a little bit thick, but you wanna generally make sure that the majority of your green is depositing in the same area. This will just make things slightly more effective when we run the experiment. So you can do this a few more times, um, depending on your patience, uh, but you do want to get like quite a solid green line forming for the best effects. Um, another thing to note is that you wanna make sure the green line is probably, you know, two or three centimeters away from the bottom of your paper. So not right on the edge, uh, a couple centimeters in is perfect, right where you need it to be. The next step that we're gonna do is we're gonna take our acetone and we're just going to pour around half a centimeter deep into the cup or the beaker of your choice. So I'll just take some here. That should be enough. You don't need to use very much at all. And the reason we're doing this step now is because if you do it right at the start, the rubbing alcohol or the acetone will eventually evaporate. Um, so just prepare it when you finish this um, filter paper sample. Now for the final step in our experiment, what we're just gonna do is we're gonna very carefully take our filter paper and dip the end closest to your green line into the rubbing alcohol. You wanna make sure that the green line doesn't actually end up submerged in the alcohol because then all of the color pigments will just dissolve in your liquid, but you do want the end to be touching. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna very gently lower it in and then I'm just gonna fold the end of the paper so that it hangs on to the side and doesn't drop any lower. Once you've secured your sample within the beaker, um, this is the part where you can have a think about what you might expect to see as the colors of your plant um, interact with our rubbing alcohol. So pause the video here, wait a couple of minutes, keep an eye on your sample and just make sure that the rubbing alcohol doesn't travel all the way up through the entire length of the paper. So once it gets to around the top of your beaker, pull it out, leave it to dry um, and have a think about what you might be seeing and why. 
So what did you guys find? Well, here's a filter paper that I prepared earlier, and hopefully your sample looks something along the lines of this. So even though our spinach leaf appears very green to our eyes, what we see is that the filter paper has managed to separate a variety of different colors out from our supposedly green leaf. So we do have a strong green band, but we also do have a yellow band as well, and also very faintly at the top, a slightly orange tinged band. So what's causing all of these colors to appear and why don't we see them when we're just looking at the leaf? Well, plants are known for being able to convert light energy from the sun into sugars through a process called photosynthesis. And a really big part of this process involves being able to absorb energy from sunlight. And so plants make a variety of colored compounds called pigments, which are specially designed to absorb various wavelengths of light energy from the sun. The one that you might have heard of, which is the most common plant pigment, is called chlorophyll and it's green, which means that it absorbs wavelengths aside from green and so reflects back green, which is why we see green with our eyes. And so the green band here is actually the plant pigment chlorophyll. But in addition to chlorophyll, plants want to try and absorb all the different wavelengths of light possible, which is why they also contain other types of plant pigments which absorb different wavelengths and are then presented as different colors to our eyes, which is where these yellow and orange bands come from. So you might wanna think about potentially what happens in autumn when a lot of green leaves start becoming yellow, orange, or brown. Why do you think these color changes occur and what is causing them? How might the plant pigments be changing within the leaf? So the experiment we've just run is like a spinach leaf chromatography. Chromatography meaning chroma, color, um, which essentially is a technique that allows us to separate color by various properties. And so in this case, what we've done is our plant pigments have been dissolved within our rubbing alcohol. And the degree to which they get dissolved depends on their chemical properties. If our plant pigments have chemical properties that are more similar to our rubbing alcohol, they dissolve better and are then able to travel further up along the paper um, through the rubbing alcohol. If, for example, we have a pigment that doesn't dissolve very well, then it doesn't get carried as far along our paper. So this is a really easy technique to use to be able to separate not just plant pigments, but also a variety of day-to-day -day objects. Um, if you ever want to test this using potentially the black ink of a ballpoint pen, you might find surprising color pigments within um, an object that you thought could just be pure black. So you can also give that a try if you've got the time. So that wraps up our experiment for today. I hope you guys enjoyed learning a bit about the plant pigments that are in leaves as well as the process of chromatography. Um, there are definitely plenty more different plants, uh, vegetables and fruits that you can explore this technique with. And as in this experiment, you might be surprised about what you find. And also, if you'd like to find out any more information about the processes that we've used and the plant pigments that we have um, separated, feel free to check out the document that accompanies this video. Thanks so much.